surprisingly, my topic tonight is generally about curiosity. And specifically, it's going to be about the proverb, curiosity killed the cat. I want to say, first of all, I am a fan of cats. I like cats. <laughs> and I apologize for any negative thoughts I bring into the room about cats or cats dying or any of that stuff. This is just a proverb, and really it points to us and not at cats. Matter of fact, honestly, if we think about it, dogs are the one with risky <laughs> behaviors that might get them into trouble. So just to get a sense of who my audience is, I'm gonna just ask you a few questions, and if you can just respond by raising your hands honestly. First off, how many of you have ever heard of the phrase or the proverb, curiosity killed the cat? Almost everybody. Okay, how about second question, which is, how many of you believe that sometimes curiosity can be dangerous? Okay, great. And finally, how many of you have a cat? All right, a lot of you. Super, good, good to know who my audience is. So according to Wikipedia, this proverb started out as care killed the cat. And here, care meant a worry or sorrow for others. And literally it translated to, if you worry too much about somebody or something, that can kill you. The phrase morphed to curiosity killed the cat. I don't know why the cat part stayed, honestly, but whatever. So it morphed to curiosity killed the cat. And here the meaning was that sometimes asking unnecessary questions or doing unnecessary investigation can be dangerous. Um, and this happened, this change happened in the 1800s. And one of the first things I did is I try to find some literature and some references where this statement has been used before and try to see what the words meant or the phrase meant in context. So the first of those was O. Henry. O. Henry wrote a short story called Schools and Schools. And in it, there was this quote, curiosity can do more than kill a cat. And if emotions, well recognized as feminine, <laughs> are inimical to feline life, then jealousy would soon render the world catless. What does that mean? Well, in the story, there's this kind of circumstance going around that makes a female character in the story jealous. And that jealousy leads to curiosity, and the curiosity leads to her steaming open some letters to kind of find out what's going on. Okay. Uh, the second story, or second play, is by Eugene O'Neill. And here the play is um, different. And in this play, there's a character named Benny. And Benny says the line, curiosity killed the cat. Ask me no questions, and I'll tell you no lies. So Benny is uh, kind of stepping out on his girlfriend. And uh, she's trying to ask him what he sees in these French ladies that he's talking about seeing. And what he says back to her is like, you know, I'm not gonna tell you. And what we learn from that is that when you're presented with difficult questions that you don't wanna answer, one way to respond is by lying. Now I'm gonna to return to the idea of danger and curiosity and uh, appropriate necessary questions and unnecessary questions and then lies and then also how curiosity somehow sometimes can be associated negatively as a feminine trait. However, what I want to do first as a foundation is go over a little bit of detail, especially as it has to do with schools, about what we know about creativity. So Dr. Elizabeth Bonowitz, and I think you heard about her in a previous speech, is a researcher at Harvard University and has studied curiosity and how it functions in us. And she says it's like a sensation. And it's a way that we can put a filter on the world to be able to figure out what to attend to. And it's really like a sense, like taste or smell, that allows us to look at the world, figure out what's important, make decisions, and eventually take action. Seems pretty important. In 2012, Giroux and Clark 
two other researchers did an in-depth study, especially of elementary school students learning science, about how curiosity operates. And first of all, they found, big surprise, that curiosity is hugely important to school success. Curious children, like this, need to first have comfort with the idea of uncertainty and ambiguity. My personal experience with curiosity, both as a teacher and a principal, confirms all of that. It's incredibly important. All the teachers that I know strive to get students to talk about subjects, collaborate, get involved, and what makes all the difference in the world is if students are curious about the subject. Now, curiosity is not just important in schools. Uh, it's a really good thing to have there, but it's actually important in all kinds of other sectors. And one area where it's a really hot topic is the business world. So in 2022, uh, BBC had a story about curiosity being a neglected trait. And in this case, it's something that increases success in the workplace. In 2023, Forbes magazine called it an overlooked leadership resource that promotes a focus on creative thinking, an orientation on solutions, and better workplace climate. Excellent stuff, right? And actually, all the research that I did showed that, on balance, curiosity is a great thing to have. So now, coming back to the proverb, like what's the deal? Why is there warning? Why are there warnings about curiosity? And what's this danger of curiosity and all that stuff? So first of all, um, going back to the Gerard and Clar research, Giro and Clar, I want to remind you that they said there were precursors to curiosity. So something has to come first. And those precursors were, were comfort with uncertainty and ambiguity. So just sharing a little bit of research I did, in 2016 I worked in Oregon and I was the research director for the chief education office. And we were the first state in the country to write legislation to study the effects of trauma and trauma-informed practices on student learning. And what we found in that research, we found out a lot, but one of the most important things that's germane to this talk that we found out is that students who have had adverse early childhood experience, and that's called ACEs, you may have heard of that before. If they've had those adverse experiences, they come into school not comfortable with the ambiguity and not comfortable with uncertainty. So those students immediately have um, less reason to be curious in our schools and way more reason to be cautious. We also found out in our research that if schools don't do something to account for the fact that some of their kids come from backgrounds where they experience trauma, those students are kind of stuck permanently in concrete, not able to excel the way kids who are curious can. And in fact, unfortunately, some students never feel safe in schools and they never have room to be curious. Okay, that's the danger part. Second part was about necessary and unnecessary questions. And here I'm just going to speak from experience. My experience is that there are um, situations in the greater community where questions come from people who have lower social status, and those questions are not as welcome as questions from folks with higher status. And I have seen a myriad of social situations where certain questions are okay to ask and other questions are not okay to ask and maybe a little bit dangerous. And I've seen situations where too many questions and too much curiosity about the wrong things or the wrong people can lead you to be shunned, ostracized, harassed, or worse. And this all comes back to that idea of killing the cat. Like the cat's going to die because it's doing something unnecessary. What's the deal? The question for us is, who gets to decide what's necessary? Now another dynamic with curiosity that honestly I didn't even expect when I was doing this research, but it came really clear to me and now makes a lot of sense, is that when curiosity is viewed negatively, it's often viewed as a feminine trait. 
And think of all these tropes in the media, the strong, silent type, the man who doesn't ask for directions, or the nagging, or over nagging woman, or overbearing mother, or gossiping women. It's pretty common that you see those in media. And then the worst of all is the Karen trope, or the Karen archetype. Here's the question for you. Men can also be bigots and racists, but why is it that the personification of that character is a woman? Well, I believe it's because the patriarchy says that women should ask fewer questions, be less curious, and the patriarchy also says often that women should just shut their mouths. So to recap, curiosity, great thing. All should have it, no doubt about it. But it's not evenly distributed across our population and not even equally supported by our school system. Second thing is, some people's questions are more necessary than others. Third thing, women are often labeled in a negative way as asking the wrong questions. And then finally, hearkening back to Benny, when you have questions asked to you by curious people and you don't want to eat Tony answers, you lie. If that was the end of my speech, it'd be pretty depressing. But the fact is, even all that's a downer, there are things that we can do to address all of these situations. First off, the school part. So it is incumbent upon us in schools that we make sure to lift up creativity as a strength for all students in our school. And that specifically, we make sure to address the fact that some students don't feel safe to ask those questions, that they feel safe with uncertainty and risk-taking. And we know how to do that. It's called trauma-informed practices, well understood, and something we can implement in school. Second, we need to recognize that all of us should be uh, curious. Everyone in our system should be asking questions. It is a strength collectively for all of us, for ourselves and our community that we're curious. And in fact, folks who ask questions are not villains, they are heroes. And if curiosity is a feminine trait, whatever the heck that means, it's a trait that all of us should have. And then about the lying part. I believe that the curiosity kills the cat points to a dynamic issue that's going on all around us right now about truth and lies. But it's way easier to tell the truth than to lie, especially to tell a whole bunch of lies. And as long as we're able to continue asking questions, the truth will come out. <laughs> nice idea, huh? So in the 1900s, this phrase came out, and you know it was a big hubbub and all that. And I found that some newspaper editors uh, published a variation of the original proverb that said, "Curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back." <laughs> and what the editors were putting out there is that they didn't feel that we should be silencing tough questions. And we shouldn't be either. Curiosity can be dangerous, but if we want to broaden our horizons, we have to keep asking questions. Thank you all very much, and have a great night.